In my personal opinion, there are three things that every single artist should have in their arsenal. And if they don't have these things, they are really doing themselves a disservice. Recently, I was having a conversation with an artist who had said that they had been locked out of their Etsy shop, which is another conversation unto itself, wink, wink. They got locked out, banned from the platform, and basically they have no place to sell their art. But they were asking me, what should I do, Dave? Where should I go? Of course, I have opinions on this topic. I have talked about this forever. The number one thing that every artist should have in their arsenal is their own e-commerce website. I personally use Shopify, I've also used Squarespace and WooCommerce. I've never used art storefronts, but some people say they're good. I personally use Shopify because I just like the company, I like the business, and I've been operating my website there for a very long time. But it's not just about Shopify. It's about having your stuff somewhere that you can sell it, that you can make transactions on, that are under your control. They're not under control of some corporate entity that can shut you down at any time. Whenever I bring up Shopify or any one of these platforms, invariably there will be somebody who will tell me it's so expensive. Listen, it's the cost of doing business. If you had your own studio gallery out on the street, that would be a whole lot more expensive than having a Shopify account or a Square Space account or a wherever account. Of course, you'd have all that remarkable wall space to deal with that you can put your artwork up on, but still. And you would think that this would be pretty common knowledge here in 2023, but you'd be surprised how many people I know personally that don't have a website where you can go to buy their art from them. You have to ask them or you have to go to another shop to go do it or you have to go to another website to go do it instead of going directly to them. It blows my mind that this still exists, but I have taken up the mantle to improve this situation for as many people as I possibly can. So if you're one of these people that hasn't built their own e-commerce solution, please do me a favor, go down to the link below that's got the Shopify thing in there and just go give it a shot. Now that's an affiliate link. I get a little bit of something, something back from them. If you use it, you don't have to use it. You can go directly to shopify.com if you want or go to Squarespace or go wherever. I even put out a free guide to help people get started in Shopify within seven days. And all you gotta do is go sign up for my newsletter and you can get it for free. But it doesn't matter which option you choose. You can go do whatever you want. Just don't not do it. Go start your own e-commerce website right now because you're missing out on so much opportunity and I don't want that for you. Speaking of newsletters, that's number two. If you are not, at the very least, collecting email addresses from the people that you sell art to, you are putting your business at risk. That's so dramatic. It's so dramatic, Dave. Why are you being so dramatic? Because it's the single most important thing that you really could do. Even if you didn't have a website, if you had the email newsletter, you could at least be reaching out to the people that you know to tell them where you are selling things, where you're going to be at events, or where you might be hanging your work in a gallery or up on a wall in some coffee shop, wherever it is that you're putting your stuff out, if you were able to send that information out to them whenever you wanted, that would be incredibly useful to you, wouldn't it? But no, people would rather just put their work up onto Etsy and then not have any capability of being able to reach out to people who have bought from them in the past. Those aren't your customers. They are Etsy's customers and they just happen to buy something from your shop. It's an incredibly tragic reality that our friend who got locked out of their Etsy page has no capability of reaching out to anybody they had sold art to in the past. That sucks. If she had had an active email list, she could have turned to that list and said, hey guys, I'm no longer on Etsy. I'm now selling all my work over here instead. But she doesn't have that option. Don't let that be you. Now, I use Substack for my email newsletter. I love that platform. It's free to use. Anybody can go. You can go check out mine down there in the description. There's also a link down there if you want to get started on your own. There's no cost whatsoever. I don't earn any affiliate income from that. I just share it because I really enjoy the platform. Is it for everybody? No, if you've got a really large email list, good for you, you don't need this any information anyway. But if you've never started an email list or you have some email addresses but you've never really communicated with people and you wanna do more communicating with them, then go down over to Substack, check it out. I promise you, you'll have a good time. I don't know if it's a good time, but it's definitely a time and you'll actually be able to reach out to people who want to hear from you. Third thing, and this one's a little bit unconventional, but it's focus. This is actually something that I have struggled with myself and I know a lot of other artists struggle with. It's having the desire to chase after all of these different project types and things to do and mediums and media and it's like, I want to try this and I want to try that and I want to try this. And I want to make all the things. I literally created this channel to explore that very idea and you should be able to explore it too. However, there is an opportunity for focus within all of that. It comes down to 
understanding who you are as an artist and what it is that number one, you want to create, number two, you think is going to be the thing that will get you the attention or the sales or whatever it is that you're looking for. Focus your energy towards that thing and only work towards that thing. Because any deviation away from that thing is going to keep you from the gold that you're trying to reach. Over the last several weeks, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what it is I'm trying to say with my work. And I feel like I'm getting to a point where I can express that, but it's going to require that I abandon some of the projects that I was working on in the past because they don't exactly fit into this new ideology. And so now all these things that I'm working on, if they don't fit in with that ideology, then I'm just not going to work on it. To give you a very specific example, there is a gallery here that's hosting a show that I tried to apply to. Well, I did apply to. I haven't heard back yet. I don't know if my work actually fits within the parameters of what that show is about. I entered it anyway because I thought, why not? After the fact, I thought to myself like, that's not where I'm headed. It's actually that piece right there. I like that piece a lot, but I don't know if it fits within the parameters of that particular show. That piece was created last year before I kind of came up with this new ideology, so it doesn't exactly fit within that, which creates two problems. Number one, I entered it into a show that I don't know if I really belong in, and number two, I'm actually going to be promoting a piece that doesn't exactly fit with where I'm headed. I'm not too worried about any of this. It just gives you a sense of what I mean when it comes to focus. I understand that the past work that I've done doesn't fit within this new plan. Now I just kind of have to make sure that everything that comes forward does. There's a bonus point to creating focus within our work. The more focused we get, the more attention we will get in return. If we show up with a clear point of view in our work, it's more likely we're going to find the people who are interested in that point of view. More willing to stick around and hang out and watch what we're going to do next and potentially buy everything we have. And that's pretty much it. You get yourself an e-commerce website, you get yourself an email newsletter, and you get yourself focused on whatever it is that you want to create and what you think the people that are around you will want to see from you. Of course, there are a bunch of nuanced things that you could dive into if you wanted to. It's important to focus on these fundamentals first so that you can really build a solid foundation for yourself and then build out from there. But don't build up too far because we're trying to focus, right? Now I have to go have a relatively uncomfortable conversation with that other artist because I don't want her to see this video before I talk to her first. That's gonna do it for this one, but I want to ask you a question first and I want you to go down in the comments and tell me what it is that you're gonna spend your focus on because I really want to know what kind of projects you're working on and how you are going to move forward in that direction, all right? And while you're down there, make sure you hit the like button, okay? Thanks very much. I appreciate you. I've been Dave. You've been awesome. I'll see you next time. Mosquito!